There is muted. But first, turn it on so we can hear it. All right. So, hello, people. Ciao. <laughs> it's Anthea. Cindy. <laughs> and uh, we are from Founders Connect. <laughs> and today, uh, can you? Is the audio working? If you are in here. Let's check it out. Is it working? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really tell me. Oh, I can't hear no echo. No echo? No? No echo? Hello? Hello? No? Is it going on? Where's your sound? It's there. It's not numb, is it? No. Um, hmm. Can you try the phone? Oh, well, like we have another technology. <laughs> we're going to test on. Oh, man. Our first one is no problem. Interesting, man. It's on. Yeah, it's working. I got it. I don't know why your audio is not you working. You said it's on. Yeah, it's on. I can hear it. Someone says it's on. Our first one, no problem. Oh, well, so, I don't know. What's something wrong with my audio? Anyway, while Cindy works out what's going on in her computer. Yeah, sorry hello, about that. We are live. Yes. So let's get into today's live Q&A. And um, what is today's topic, Cindy? How to communicate better with your partner. <laughs> okay. Live Q&A. That's it? right. And uh, we are... This is uh, basically the topic of this week's uh, article and well, guide that we've created, and which is now live on our website. Um, if you want to go check out, we have a free guide to couples communication. It's um, at the link on the screen. You might want to screenshot that and just go there. Or Cindy, you can drop it in the chat. Actually, that's probably sure. The way I would to do drop it. it in the chat. <laughs> you click on there. Yeah, and now you can just put it in. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. So that's the URL. Okay. okay drop it. Drop yeah. it. <laughs> so, you know, you just copy, you've already got it up there, just copy and paste. Oh, sorry, that's, darling. You know, I feel like this. That's the uh, quicker way to do it. No, this one. Yep. There you go. So, the link's coming to you dropping. right now. Awesome. All right, so if you have a question on this topic of how you know, couples communication, how to improve the way you communicate, uh, please put your question in the comments below and we'll be able to answer that. Um, and we're very, this is a very important topic that uh, we are always living and experiencing and uh, talking about with other couples as well. So um, yes, if you have any questions that do come up, go ahead and share those. Okay, and all right, so let's talk about uh, why this is important, right? Of course, why not? <laughs> and what's the uh, up there on the slide right now? He or she doesn't get me. Oh, I'm sure we always get this one, especially at the beginning of any relationship. So do you have a story that you can share with us or that experience for you in any of your relationships where you know you felt the other person didn't understand you or why don't you tell us a story I, think I tell a lot of stories so do i that's your turn come on mr <laughs> because it's different i'll you, you share i'll share one as a husband you share one as a wife okay you share yours okay well um i'll tell you uh, one that we had that was very real at the beginning of our relationship where uh, one time Cindy was over at, when we were still dating and Cindy was at my apartment and something was going on and there was like tears, a lot of tears uh, and it went like not just crying but bawling uh, all night. <laughs> and I, Thanks. And, uh, oh, I do remember that. Oh, uh, do you remember it now? <laughs> yeah, thank you for your reminder. Yeah, and so... You know, in that moment, I felt like I didn't know what 
happening? What was happening? I didn't know what you what you were trying to communicate, um, and because of that, I didn't know really how to respond to that. And, I, and my immediate thinking, in my brain was, oh my gosh, this is this is it. The relationship is over. You know, yeah, basically um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> and so there are moments like that where you just don't know what the other person is expressing, um, and it, it's it's hard. It's hard to, to to work through that. And and if you don't find a way to improve and understand each other, then that can lead to problems and complications with the relationship further on. Definitely. And, and for some couples, it ends up in a breakup, a divorce, whatever it may be. Uh, exactly. So what would you do in that situation? Well, are you asking me? Are you asking the people, people watching? What did you do? Do you remember? Yeah. So I just basically, I just my main thing there was to be as supportive as I could in in try and demonstrate that I wouldn't leave because I think that was an important part of that communication. So I sat down on the floor with you and, and held you um, and said, look, you know, and I just let you allow you to feel those emotions. Um, and, and whatever was going on in my head, I had to not tell myself these stories that were just stories and not real, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because it's very easy to say, oh, you know, oh, it's my fault, I messed up, you know, whatever it may be. But the fact was, I didn't know what was happening. So, um, and I actually expressed that verbally to you as well. I said, I don't know yes, what's going definitely. on here. Right. So after that, we had a really nice chat as to what has just happened. And we also communicated what we felt at that stage and how we can deal with that when it comes up again, if it ever isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you really cannot get a girl. You know, women are just too complex for men to ever understand. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've coached women, like, for a long time, so, you know. Yeah, it's true, yeah. but majority of the time when you uh, know each other long enough or you connect well, uh, you do get some sort of hints and connection that kind of um, help you with that kind of thing and uh, to get you a little bit more so as we grow together and spend more time together we are now like thinking the same can finish each other's sentences isn't it almost 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 <laughs> and uh, you know basically uh, if you're really in tune to getting to know the person, that won't eventually happen. It's about listening, understanding, actively listening. And yeah, and, and being kind and uh, forgiving, you know, uh, and being um, like showing empathy and all these things, right? And just being real about, hey, like I don't know all the answers, and but we all we all work together. And there are moments when you have arguments or, or disagreements about things, uh, and in those scenarios, it's something that we kind of adopted. I think naturally is that you know we're part of the same team, and and we're trying to work through a challenge together. Uh, and it's never like it's your fault or it's your fault or anything I don't like think this. I ever, ever, ever said that. Right? Um, or, you know, or definitely not calling names and things like this because when you get upset or angry, um, so something that that I know you used to do, you used to walk away, you know. That's a long time ago. <laughs> so how much I have you grown? I told him that yeah. um, before, I think before I met you actually. Before I met you, all my arguments with anybody or disagreements with anybody, I would just go for a really long walk. And uh, yeah, I'm sure my family can vouch for that. I walked all the way from Maryfield to Bankstown or Bankstown to Maryfield. Which is Several like, times. How far is that walk for people who don't know these places? Oh yeah, trust me, if you go by driving, it's 30 minutes at least. <laughs> That's my clue. Yeah, and that's so important, important lesson to take away from that one is sharing with your partner how you deal with when mm -hmm. you're upset or you're angry or whatever as well. So they can they, they now know what to expect. 
mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that's something that we've really worked on is to understand how we both deal with different emotions and different scenarios. And so, like for me, I like to process things. So I would say, okay, let me process that. Um, and that's something that, you know, which is different for Cindy and something that she doesn't do. So she's had to learn to like, okay, wait a minute. Like he's going to have like time to have to write this down or whatever and come yeah, back. Yeah, you need time to write an essay on, this <laughs> on what has just happened. There you go. And so, like me, it's just like, when you're feeling, why are you feeling this? It's now, 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 now. Yeah. And so a big part of it is, and this is what our guy goes into, mm -hmm. is understanding yourself first. Uh, because if you don't know how you behave and act in certain situations, then it's very hard for you to communicate that to your partner, right? And, and they might be a, a reflection. So they might say, well, this is what you're doing right now. And so you kind of have to listen to that feedback. Um, and a good way is to talk to your siblings or to your, your parents or, or people who know you for a long time and be like, you know, well, what do I do when I'm upset? Or, you know, um, what have you observed? Mm. If you don't know that about yourself. But that's something that's important. So yeah, I, I remember at the beginning of our, our relationship, I asked him, what ticks you off? What makes you angry? Yeah, and like on the third day. He couldn't even tell me. I was like, oh my gosh. Like on the third day, that's all she asked me. Can you believe that, people? Yes. <laughs> remember to do that at the beginning of the day. So you know the right person for you. There you go. Um, okay, so that's really why, and I think we, we could have covered the importance of that. Now, mm -hmm. something that uh, we want to share here is just a, a tip around before you actually try to communicate with your partner, um, there's a, a couple of things that you probably... <laughs> well, Ivan just came in and he goes, yes, I can believe it. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. So what can you believe, Ivan? I'm sure Ivan's got his own uh, tips on, on arguments and how to navigate those with your partner. Uh, and this is something that's important like before you try to communicate with someone is to don't think about you know how like don't think of how to get your partner to do what you want like that's really not the object objective of the communication um, and it's not about how to like communicate with him or her in, in like like that's not the goal the goal really is to understand what's important in that communication or in that moment um, so there are a couple of questions here that you can ask, well, four questions here you can ask yourself before you even enter uh, that with your partner. First one being, do you want to feel emotionally connected with your partner? Um, the second one is, you know, how curious are you to learn his or her perspective, right? Uh, so this is really like, helps you understand your motivation for what you're try trying to do in that moment, right? Is it about trying to manipulate someone else? Is it about trying to get them to do something, persuade them to see your perspective or is it really about trying to just understand each other um, and doesn't have to, doesn't have to mean that you agree at the end of that conversation right uh, the third question you can ask is do you care how he or she or she feels right now right so that's about the answer eh? yes of course <laughs> uh, it, you know that's important if you don't care about what they what they feel then that's going to just lead to more explosive arguments or yeah, that's exactly. going to lead up to a breakup um, there's a great video we shared on the, the guide, mm -hmm. um, which is actually a comedian, Ronnie, what's his name, Ronnie Chen or something, the, the guy in uh, oh, Crazy Rich Asians. Really uh, he does this real, this whole bit about, um, uh, he does this bit about dating some girl and then they end up watching a video of Kanye West um, and she basically tells him off um, because of what she sees and, and they get this whole argument and, and this is brilliant oh, punchline yeah. where he says, you know, like he, because him being a lawyer or trained lawyer, trained lawyer. so he definitely knows how to, how to debate and argue. Uh, he's like, well, this is how you, you uh, I won't ruin for you. Just go to the guide and, and watch the video, but it's hilarious. It's a great example, a bit um, extreme, but I can see that happening in, in relationships. So the uh, final question here is, you know, what do you love and value about your partner? Okay, so if you remind yourself about that before you enter a, a, a difficult conversation, um, then that can really help you reset your expectation around what it is that you're trying to achieve from that. Mm, it definitely calms your mind down to whatever high emotions you have that there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yes, Ivan says... Uh, with a trusted partner, if you're open and genuine, you have to put aside any ego and communication about anything. 
So that basically kind of summarised that, isn't it, Dan? Yes, yeah, and it's uh, trust is such an important thing, and that's uh, something that I've learned definitely from Sydney. Is that something you build um, and you have to continue to work at? And if you lose that trust at the beginning, it's harder to, to get that back. Not impossible, but it's definitely hard yes. to work on that. That's the exact words that I told him. Exactly. So I listen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Finally. Right. Okay. And uh, what else did Ivan say there? So Ivan said, pointed out about growth. So basically he said that um, you either grow together or you grow apart. Mm. So that's an interesting point, isn't it? Yeah. So what uh, advice do you have or how have you gone about um, identifying whether or not you're going in the same direction? Curious to hear what sort of strategies you've had on that one, either. Yeah. Uh, okay, so those are questions that definitely definitely you want to sort of ask yourself before you enter the communication. Oh, yeah. And then, so let's talk about some communication exercises um, that that we can do with our partners, right? Um, well, Cindy, do you want to bring... Of course. Oh, those. Okay, so. So we have there's an NLP presupposition. <laughs> okay, so that's 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 um, they're basically guidelines. <laughs> really, I'll put this into plain English because I, I'm yes, NLP, it's an NLP practitioner, so I've, I've been trained on neuro linguistics programming. Um, yes. And when we were doing our training. We always started with what's called the 13 NLP presuppositions um, and they're basically central principles that guide uh, like principles or assumptions that you use as a coach or facilitator um, and it helps frame the work that you do when you're communicating with someone else, okay? And whether you use the NLP ones or you, you just develop your own, that's fine. Um, but what it's really all about is just getting clear on, for example, in the workbook that we're going to share with you, um, there is an exercise there which is all about working out with your partner what your fight, your fight rules are, okay? And that, that's basically, you know, sitting down together and just identifying, okay, well, here, are, if we're going to get into an argument, then these are the certain guidelines or rules that we need to both, that we both believe in and that we're going to agree to. Okay, so things like don't call each other names, like Cindy and I were talking about that earlier, uh, or don't, you know, maybe don't raise your voice, and if you raise your voice, then the other person can call, or like say, hey, you're raising your voice, and, and just resetting that, right? What I normally do is try to touch that person, or hold their hands, to make aware that you're still here and you're on the same side. And that normally calms the person kind of the emotion goes further down isn't it yes and that only okay so so coming back to setting those guidelines that was established as a guideline and if i'm doing that that's what i'm that's what the intention is because some people might not want physical touch happening during an argument right because maybe that triggers something they've had in there when they were a kid and they maybe they were beaten or something who knows but then right? you know. so yeah so it's important to establish what those guidelines are um so with the presuppositions if you want to flick back to those there are a couple that uh, I highlighted in the guide, which I really, um, which really works well. Uh, okay, so here are three that, that of the of the thirteen that that I use um, when in communication, certainly with Cindy, um, it, and just it's just really good guidelines to use in communication in general. So the first one is that a person is not his or her behavior. Okay, so that's very interesting. It's all right, so it's it's you, it's easy to say, oh, someone, okay, you're acting this way, therefore that's just that's you, like, and you can easily turn that into like that's a, a flaw of theirs or that's something wrong with them. Um, but this presupposition or this 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 assumption or this statement is saying that it's that behaviors are learned, right? So uh, if they learn that behavior somewhere and usually it comes from their childhood or the environment then they can also unlearn that behavior okay uh, and so that's not actually a representation of the person themselves it actually comes from something they picked up somewhere along the way right and so uh, an example of this is so i knew someone who was in a very a violent relationship okay and they would always find themselves in this relationship where the the so the, the 
the partner, the, the man was beating them or, or getting physical, um, getting into these like violent situations. Uh, and, but that's the violence, it, it, it came from when he was abused as a child, right? And so that was a learned behavior um, or, or actually for her, she had, um, she had a similar situation where when she was a child, she would be shouted at and, and her dad was an alcoholic or whatever it may be. Uh, and that she was used to like love her, her meaning or definition or view of love was that when I, when someone is shouting at me or getting physical with me, that's love. Okay. And, and yeah, it's very interesting how that translates, especially when you're young right. and you see a lot of that from your you know, close ones. Yeah. And so that's a, that's, that's a learned behavior. So what happens when the child becomes an adult is they expect that to be love. Right, because they've not had any other way where it's like, well, actually, that's not, that's probably not a good thing to be happening in your relationship, um, and so they have to learn. Okay, actually, someone doing that to me, that's abuse, and that's not okay, uh, and so they had to unlearn those behaviors and, and re reframe uh, and reeducate themselves on what you know different ways of receiving love. Okay, um, that's just an example. Now, uh, another presupposition we've got here is. Um, Behind every behavior lies a positive intention. Okay, uh, I'll say that again. It's behind every behavior lies a positive intention. And this one we see a lot in our relationship and, and, and when, the, when other friends and whatever get into arguments and, or, or disagreements, it's like... Um, like Perspective, I, I think. Yeah, it's, it's like, so I might want to do something, I might do something, a, a behavior, an action, that I'm doing it might with positive intention. So I actually want it to do it because I feel that it's going to help our relationship in some way or, or I'm showing some kind of gesture. Um, but because of the way I'm doing it or maybe because I'm not doing it like the way it's not effective in the way I'm communicating it, Cindy might receive it a different way. And this is actually a really good example of this is one of the exercises that the first exercise in the workbook is um, doing the love languages exercise with your partner. Yeah, it'll help a lot. Yeah. Trust me. And so we we did cover this in a previous um, Q and A and whatnot, but the love language and also on the podcast episode. Um, but the love languages are basically there's five. Do you remember what those are? Physical. Which is touch. Touch, yes. Gifts. Receiving gifts or giving gifts. Yeah. Verbal, which is words, speech, act of service. Yep. Oh, what's the last one? Auditory. Is it? What, no, that's words. Quality time. Quality time, that's right. Okay. So there, there, so love languages, if you're not familiar with the concept, it's basically it's a book and there's also a whole, uh, just check out the love languages test. It's free, it's online. It's also the links in our guide. Um, and it basically, a study has been done on, on the way couples communicate and it comes down to like distilled into five ways that we like to receive and give love. Okay. Um, and the problem arises when when two partners have different love languages as their primaries, and this happens quite often actually, more often than not, uh, and when one partner communicates in their, the way they prefer but not the way the partner prefers, then that causes problems because the partner is not feeling that love or not receiving, they, they're not sensing that um, because they would prefer to receive that love in a different way. So let's give a practical example. So Cindy is a... Act of service. Act of service person. Okay, so... So what does he do for me? Wash my dishes. <laughs> so, so I'll do things like literally yesterday and lift up this heavy box of clothes and things and put it up on a shelf and down and, and these things. Oh, that's true. With a, see, these, these are physical things and they're things that the acts of service, right? Yes, because um, you know, I'm a shorty. And it's also, that's what that's how she likes to receive love. Uh, and it's very different to if I were to give her a box of chocolates or something like that like the the that's still a, 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 an indicator but for her it's like maybe it's not no, as I need you to do stuff for me there you go basically. see right so it's it's learning you know what your primary secondary whatever it is and then what your partner sees and then, then you're able to then have a conversation about that and communicate with each other you know based on that um, those languages and so that ties into the presupposition I just shared, which is behind every behavior lies a positive intention. So even though my positive, my intention is to make my partner happy by giving her a gift, right? 
but the behavior, so that's a positive intention of behavior, but the, the message might not be received because the way she wants to receive that message is different. Yes, right? definitely. Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually say that he needs appreciation language at work. Oh. That's very powerful, isn't it? But I think that's generally uh, for work kind of ethics. But see, this is the thing. These communication skills, we're, we're talking about relationship like in the, the romantic sense, but these apply everywhere. Right, like we saw that happen. Uh, one, we went to one company one time. Um, we attended a seminar that they were running, and they had the love languages. They did the test with all their employees uh, and put it on the wall, so so everyone knew everyone's love languages and how to best communicate. Yeah, with them. that was really cool. Right, and this was great for parents and kids. Right, and so that's a good way. Of, it just applies everywhere, really. Um, so you know we're talking relationship, but it applies to many types of relationships. Many, yes. All right. So. Okay. So let's let's. So that's one is uh, we talked about doing the love languages test together. We talked about uh, having rules of uh, fight rules or engagement. So that's the second exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. And what's another exercise that we can do? Um, Active listening exercises. That's very important. I'm sure that's the hardest thing, really. <laughs> so, that's the really the hardest thing. So how do you do active listening? So, you know, sometimes when you're listening, you hear the words, but really you need to see the words, the face, the tone, and that's active listening to me. Okay, so um, it's exactly what Cindy, Cindy just said. So when you basically sharing with each other, you are doing those things, paying attention to the words, to, to the, it's called sensual acuity, so being paying attention to how they're breathing, their eye movements, all these different things. Um, and then also just... Uh, verbalizing back to them a check. So, you, so if they, if, say, if some, if so, say a statement right now. Oh, I am hungry. Okay, so then I could then I'm listening to that and just and I could say, well, um, so what I'm hearing is that you're hungry. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so that's active listening only works if you uh, replay okay. back to the person what you've heard them say mm -hmm. right and then you can you can then say well you, that's not quite right yeah right? that's not quite right I'm hungry but I'm also lazy to get food okay so like there, you, tone, you know? there you go okay, okay. so tone. so that clarification is the that's a big part of the active listening exercise okay Same. so you can do that with each other hint, and, and hint. <laughs> uh, Ivan's got it there he said you know paraphrasing back also helps with active listening. Okay, so you can you can say what the, what exactly. you, you think you've heard them say, but back in your own uh, in your own way, and, and just get that verified and validated, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so there are three three sort of communication exercises that you can sort of play with. Uh, we've got like seven other ones that we've researched and, and some that come from. Um, different uh, marriage therapists and relationship counselors and, and whatever it is, uh, definitely go check that out. Yeah, um, it would be fun too to do some together, maybe as a date day. Date day. day. Yes. <laughs> get closer. Ooh, Ooh okay. Um, so if you have uh, if you have any more questions on this stuff, please just let us know in the comments. Uh, and here's the worksheet, so you can just head over to. Uh, foundersconnect.co forward slash communicate and you can download the 10 exercises for better couples communication okay um, that's really all we had for you today um, and if you want to go and check out the, the, the guide you can go head over to this, uh, this website here and grab that yes <laughs> grab it grab it and try it out there you go okay and trust Ivan. Ivan now Ivan's also a communications coach so he's a great yes. person to work with uh, and exactly. he also uses um, improv training to actually run really fun exercises with, with couples and, and in the work environment as well, in the professional environment. So definitely but someone yeah, to recommend. You should check him out as well. <laughs> yes, talk him. Yeah, um, I think you would like that, wouldn't you, Ivan? But uh, we'll, we'll, if you have any questions at all, please let us know. Um, that's it from us today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Okay, ciao.